You call that a spirit sword? This is a spirit sword. Hey, 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 how's it going, guys? Today we're going to check out and compare the 1.0 and 2.0 Vegito figures. Uh, now, while these aren't exactly the same uh, character versions, uh, they're still the best uh, Vegito figures that we do have available to us, excluding a couple of event figures. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how well the 1.0 holds up after six years. It originally came in 2015. It's uh, pretty crazy to think about. Um, it's been that long. Okay, so before we crack these guys open and see what they come with, uh, let's have a quick look at the boxes for them. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that the 1.0 is rocking their old school box style, uh, whereas the 2.0 obviously has their new slick design um, with the figure sort of cutting it into the clear part. And since the, uh, the blue Vegito here is new, he does have a Tamashii Nations quality seal, which the old one doesn't have. Uh, this is only a new uh, recent addition to the figures to help with um, spotting a legit figure or not. As I mentioned before, the 2.0 is not an exact upgrade over 1.0, as it has no Super Saiyan or base head, uh, which is a little bit of a disappointment for me personally. Um, however, the 2.0 is stacked with accessories, which mm, kind of makes up for it a little bit, and there are some third party makers that uh, make some great looking headsets. Oh yeah, check these guys out! Uh, both of the figures are absolutely stacked full of accessories, which is something that I love to see in any release. Let's go over 1.0 accessories first, then we'll jump onto the Mr. Blue 2.0. Uh, so with the original release, um, Super Saiyan and base form Vegito, we have him with the Super Saiyan head, as well as the base form here. And along with that, we've got two Super Saiyan faceplates and two base form uh, with different expressions. The Super Saiyan ones have a bit more of a smug, uh, kind of side glancing look. And the base one has the screaming face as well. Um, that one's currently attached on the main head at the moment for the Super Saiyan head. Um, then we've got the extra two pairs of hands and the one flat one. Um, and that one there is for the Spirit Sword. Uh, the Super Saiyan 1.0 also comes with the folded arms, which is awesome. And then we've got the main effect here, which is the Spirit Sword, which is cool. Uh, it's got a spiky end, and that actually attaches to his hand here uh, to hold up, which is really cool. And over on Mr. Blue, we've only got the Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue um, faces and heads. Uh, so the one main head, and then the extra three face backs with the open mouth kind of screaming uh, to the side, I believe it is, and then looking forward, and the teeth gritting look. Um, he is stacked with hands though, uh, so we've got one, two, what's that, three complete pairs, and then we've got an extra couple of additional hands as well. Um, for example, this one here is for the key blast, which we'll go over shortly. And then for the effects, we've got the two parts here which join to form the ball, and then off to the side in a separate packaging, we have the actual key blast, which is very long, and it can split in two. And this little part down here is for this, since you can connect it up to the uh, fused Zamas figure as well, which is pretty cool. And then up on top we have a key blast with the um, sort of yellow lightning sparks uh, shooting off it, which is cool. So I think that's the final Kamehameha. I believe that is what it's called. And yeah, that attaches straight to the hand, which is awesome. Oh yeah, check these guys out. Just looking from afar, the 1.0 really does hold up well, I reckon. Um, it's been six years, uh, so I kind of would have expected a little bit more of a difference if you look at them straight away, but yeah, for a figure from 2015, he still looks really good. Though the main difference we'll see will be in the articulation, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, but first, let's kind of have a quick look at the differences that we can see uh, just from looking at the figures. Now, starting off, the 2.0 Vegeta has a really kind of deep, rich, navy blue color, uh, whereas the original 1.0 is a little bit more of a muted um, blue. Um, I'm not really sure which one I prefer more. Um, the 1.0 is a little bit more subtle in a lot of ways, which I do think is quite nice. Along with the difference in the body color, the 1.0 has the same color belt, um, which is really nice, whereas the 2.0 is a lighter blue trying to match in with the hair. I kind of would have preferred a color which was the same as the body. Um, it's not too much of a big issue or something that really sticks out as a negative. Um, it's just something as a bit more of a personal preference, um, especially when you look at the 1.0. I think it looks a bit nicer. 
and it's a little bit of a distraction on him, I believe. Uh, the orange used on the inner vest is different as well. Again, the 2.0 is a bit more vibrant. It's like they've um, pumped up the saturation a lot more with the newer figures. Um, however, in the opposite route, the um, feet, the tips on the shoes on the 2.0 is a lot more of a darker colour. Um, whereas the 1.0 is quite a light mustard colour. The 1.0 body type does hold up really well with this figure, I reckon. Um, the nappy look of them on the waist does stick out a little bit compared to the more sleeker 2.0 waist design, um, which has the extra points of articulation. Um, the 2.0 legs do look a bit nicer as well, with a little bit extra detail and um, definition and a bit more weight to them. Uh, whereas the 1.0 ones are a little bit more uh, sleeker and kind of gets bunched up above the knee, then it goes kind of a bit more skinnier. Um, whereas the flared look on the 2.0 I feel is a nicer touch. Uh, the earrings on the two fingers is quite noticeably different. Uh, the 1.0 I guess showing its age here, they are a lot chunkier and bigger, uh, but they're still pretty well um, sculpted and coloured which does give them a nice look. Uh, whereas the earrings on the 2.0 are very small and they've got a nice silver colouring on them. And again, yeah, I think they look really good. I think the sizing on the 2.01 is better, uh, but this is just basically down to advancement in technology where they can uh, sculpt items a lot cleaner than what they could uh, six years ago. Um, the other main noticeable difference you'll see is on the arms and the skin toning. The 1.0 does have a little bit of shading, a little bit of different uh, colour in the muscle areas to give it definition, uh, whereas the 2.0 is just a straight plastic colour. Uh, this is one of the big differences that you'll see between the 1.0 and 2.0 figures in general. Uh, the 1.0 ones use a lot more shading and um, colouring on the figures, which is really nice. And that's something that I'd like to see them bring back eventually in the 2.0 figures. Uh, so yeah, yeah, enough with having a look at them in a still position. Uh, let's get in a bit closer and do some posing, check out their articulation and see how well they hold up. So now that we've seen them in all their glory, let's start bending and twisting these guys. So starting with a 1.0 from the top down, um, the head is very similar to what you'd expect from any other 1.0 figure if you've used them. So yeah, the left and right up and down of the head movement is really nice on the original Vegito, which is really cool, um, especially since he comes with a lot of those side glancing um, uh, expressions for his face plates. Um, the neck itself can move a little bit, it's a bit more limited, it's a bit hard to kind of get in there, um, but it does have a little bit of motion as well. Uh, for his shoulder joint, it's just got a single long peg that goes directly from in his shoulder underarm all the way into the torso and this will allow it to pivot up and down and then with that pair you can swivel all around as well. Uh, it's quite nice so you can get up and down and move it around into a pose that you want. And then with shoulder pads are just floating there as well uh, to help cover the joints. Um, overall pretty simplistic but it works really nice. Um, and again for the arms, it's got your standard range of motion there. Same with the wrist and hands that can swivel. Uh, the torso, you don't have an ab crunch per se. Um, you've got the one giant peg that goes from the hips up to the torso, and that's covered by the belt. Um, but it does give you a really good range of motion, though, um, which is nice. So in some ways, the 1.0 fingers can be nicer to pose in the 2.0. Um, just if you want to kind of pose him forward, he doesn't have much range. Going back, not so bad, though. But it's when you kind of want to pose them in a forward facing position where you have the trouble. And same when it comes to the legs, since you've only got the one main nappy waist area here, as a lot of people like to refer to, it is a lot more limited than what you can do. Um, but they do have a decent range for when doing the splits. And with the knees, it's got a single double joint there to swivel up. The inner leg is on a joint, so you can pull them down and up to give you that little bit extra range if you need uh, though depending on the pose it isn't the most prettiest of looks for him um, but it isn't too bad in what you can do okay so moving over to Mr Blue starting at the top um, he's got a lovely range of motion in his head and around um, one thing there has been a uh, bit of a complaint about with this figure is how his head sits up so high um, there is one slight niggly Disappointment with him, but there are ways to fix that, but it also does give him a good range of motion as well, which is quite good 
uh, since it's list pass to stop it from moving. Uh, the neck as well, you can get um, the neck as well can be moved around a little bit more than the 1.0 figure. So moving down to the shoulder, this is a very similar design to the 1.0, but the peg that it swivel on is a lot closer, and you do have that extra joint on the inside, which allows the arms to swivel forward and back, which is a lovely addition. Um, the seam and join for the upper shoulder and the lower arm part is a lot smoother and it blends in a lot nicer, which is great. Uh, the articulation of the elbow joint and wrists is um, basically the same. Um, over onto the torso, the 2.0 body type does have the extra joint on the top to give you that slight ab crunch. Um, again, it's a little bit limiting, uh, but you can get that extra couple of points of articulation going around several ways and then the upper body independently as well so you can get them into a little bit more of a dynamic pose which is nice and again for the legs instead of having one whole solid piece um, it's separated into a couple of different areas where you can rotate so you can swivel the leg on this part and you've got the inner hip area as well which will move and that gives you a lovely range of articulation and points where you can switch up the posing to get into a Bit of a nicer looking um, pose without any horrible joints showing which is great. Uh, for the leg you do have a kneecap as well so when you swivel his leg all the way up uh, you have an extra part there as well which is quite nice. Uh, so that's why the legs do look a lot nicer and they get the nice flare going out compared to 1.0 which kind of flares out then comes back in skinny. Uh, so that is how they're able to achieve a nicer overall balance with the legs which is great. And the ankles and feet movement is all pretty much the same as well. Uh, the toes are a little bit more stiffer to move compared to the 1.0. As we saw at the start, the Spirit Swords are pretty different between the two versions. Uh, this is the 1.0 Spirit Sword and personally I kind of prefer it. It's a little bit more usable compared to the 2.0 one uh, which we'll put together now. Uh, the 2.0 comes in four parts, so you've got the main actual sword area here, and this just slots in like so. Line up the peg holes, and it connects. And there we go, so this part's nice and easy to put together. Uh, so for the base, you've got the two parts here. On the back side of them, uh, you've got a couple of peg holes on the big part, so just line those up and push it together. Uh, though be warned that it is very sharp, uh, so if you do want to take it apart, I do recommend warming up the plastic first in some hot water. Uh, and that way you can sort of take it apart without stabbing yourself too badly. Uh, the next step is to take the sword and you can just slot it onto the giant peg on the other side of the spike. Okay, so there we go. This is the 2.0 Spirit Sword. And here goes the 1.01. About twice the size, if not slightly bigger. Um, both are awesome and they look great. Though the 1.0 is just a little bit more usable. Uh, the 2.01 doesn't have a socket for a stand on the actual effect itself, but the 1.01 does, just on the bottom here, so you can attach this to a stand. Um, but for the 2.01, you just have to rest it on one of the um, stand arms. Uh, so I've got the 1.0 here. I've switched out the hand to the kind of flat kind of fingers together one and that just matches the slight u-shape on the effect and it just slots in it's as simple as that um, depending on the age of your figure if you've got slightly loose joints you might not be able to hold up too well um, but in that case you can use a stand on the effect itself so not too much of an issue okay so i've got the 2.0 figure here with his hand on very similar to the 1.0 except for it's a bit more of a flatter um, position that he has uh, but just like the 1.0 you take it line up with the slot on the effect and yeah just poke it on there you go just stick it in there and away you go uh, the 2.0 also comes with this clip which can attach to the zamas and then one part will connect to the one half of his spirit sword and then the other half will poke into the back of zamas so it looks like you've um, spared him in two Okay, so here we have the extra key blast that comes with the Jetta, which is awesome. I love the extra sort of sparking spikes that stick out of it. And it also comes with a nice peg on him, uh, which connects drilly into this additional hand. Uh, so it means once you've got it attached on there, uh, you're free to pose them however you want, and you're not going to lose that blast. Whereas some of the older ones, when you're trying to get them into the right pose, uh, the key blast will kind of fall away or kind of slots down, and it's hard to get into that right position, but... 
being attached straight to a hand uh, just makes life so much easier. Um, while not necessarily a effect or anything like that, the 1.0 does come with the folded arms, um, and yeah, looks awesome. And again, with these arms, you've got a nice shading coming through as well, and yeah, it just looks really good. Even with the base head, um, which is made pretty much the same as the Super Saiyan one um, in terms of the earring size. Uh, so before we jump into the final thoughts, one last thing to point out about the Twin over Jetta is that his bangs actually come off. So we take his faceplate off. And there we go. So you pop the bangs off, and if you want to change the face, just grab one of the other faceplates, and you can slot those bangs in there as well. Um, one of the heads comes with them permanently attached. And that's his screaming face, and they've got them flying in a different direction. Uh, so it's an interesting choice that they did with these extra faces and uh, not to have them on every single one but we change it. Uh, so if you're oh body for the face paints you've got the one, two, three areas where it does slot onto. Whereas with the 1.0 the bangs come off and then the face paint just attaches with the two pegs underneath. And in case you're wondering, can the 1.0 head fit on the 2.0 body? Well, yes, it can. Um, the peg sizes are different, so it is very loose and it can't hold itself up. Though, once you do have the faceplate and everything on, it's not so bad and it is usable. Um, though, it is just a bit loose, so if you're trying to get into a dynamic pose, it might not be able to hold it. But if you're just standing there, yeah, it is an option to get away with. So now that we've seen the packaging, what they come with, the figures, the cool effects that they come with, uh, let's get into the pros and cons and the final thoughts on the 1.0 and 2.0 Vegeta figures. Uh, starting with the 1.0 figure, my only real con is that the body is the 1.0 version. Uh, that kind of goes without saying, um, but the articulation you do get is a little more limited compared to what you can with the newer figures, and the joints can be a little bit more looser. Uh, despite the 1.0 body though, you can still get a lot of good poses out of them and it just takes a little bit more time and being a bit more creative on the angles you use to hide some of those joints. Um, though compared to other 1.0 figures, I have always found the Vegeta here to be a little bit easier to pose and I think for his price, I believe at the moment of aftermarket range, he's still only around $50. I think for that price point, he is a good pickup. Um, and I really do recommend it. And now for the 2.0 body Vegito, the Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegito, Mr. Blue himself. My only real con is that he doesn't have a Super Saiyan head or base form. I would have loved to have seen those included with him. And then the extra blue colour on his waist there, if they'd gone with a darker blue to match in with his suit, I think that would have been perfect. At the moment, it just sticks out a little bit too much and it kind of brings your eye into there due to the contrast difference. Uh, whereas with 1.0's being the same colour, you don't really notice it and it just blends in lovely so you focus more on his face and other features. Um, the 2.0 body type, well, not much to really say there, it just works extremely well, um, it's nice. A little bit more articulation in the upper region would have been nice though. And the peg on his key blast might be a tad too long as well, along with his um, head. Depending on the pose, his head does look like it sits a little bit high. Um, but for what everyone complains about online, I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as what they say. Um, it really does come down to the posing and angle that you have his head sitting at and from which angle you're looking at as well. Uh, generally speaking, it's not really too much of an issue. Uh, the effects from though, the 2.0 wins hands down since so he's got this extra key blast as well as the sword. Though, the 1.0 um, Spirit Sword, I feel, is a lot more usable. As you can see on the back there, there's a big size difference. Um, in terms of buying these, if you have neither figure and you're after one and you're on a limited budget, go for 1.0. He's an awesome figure and half the cost. Uh, the 2.0 Vegito, since he is premium Bandai, he's a lot harder to get on the second market. Um, in the overseas areas, and I believe he is going for roughly 100 to 120 US at the moment, I believe. Um, whereas Vegeto, half a cost at about $50. So yeah, six years difference between them? I mean, yeah, you can definitely see it in terms of the um, build quality of the joints, um, and the detailing, especially around the earrings, 
But beyond that, I feel like he holds up extremely well for six years. What do you guys reckon? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, and prior to making this video, I did do a poll in the community section asking you guys what one do you prefer. And yeah, 80% I believe picked the 2.0. Now after seeing this video, I wonder if it's still the same. Um, a lot of people will kind of dismiss the 1.0 figures from the get-go because they're older. Um, but they still have a lot of play value in them, especially for the pricing. And if you're a collector, I highly recommend getting them. Um, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more 1.0 versus 2.0 uh, videos and comparisons, please let me know. And yeah, let me know which figures you want to see compared and I'll see if I can add it to the list for the future. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. And yeah, cheers for watching.